Hello everyone, assalamu alaikum. Here we'll take a look how to create a custom app bar like this. Well, it's a custom app bar because here we can replace with different kind of icons. And as you can see here, I have a timer and here I have a text widget, but you would be also able to replace this with icons. And over here we would see how to replace this, hide this, things like that. And we'd be able to control the height of this app bar as well. Now this app bar, actually, if we click on this icon, it would show up in another page, but a lot of the properties would be hidden. For example, if I click on this menu button, we'll come over here. Actually, we use the same custom app bar to show it over here. If we can go back and we see. So the idea is we'll create a custom app bar where we'd be able to do a design like this or a design like this or whatever the other way you want. So we'll have a lot of options to control our design. To get started, check out the link below. So we need a starter code for that. So we already have that one. Check out from the link below. Now, next, the first thing we have to do, we need to go ahead and create a stateless class. And the stateless, the stateless class name would be custom app bar. So inside the constructor of this custom app bar, so we have this title, which have a default value. And over here, we also have leading and the title widget. Now, both of these would be widgets, but as you can see over here from the marking that they're optional. So we may pass value for these parameters or we can skip that. Now for the title itself, title is necessary, but at the same time, we have a default value. Now, because we want to be able to control the height of this app bar, so we need to implement another widget class over here, which is called preferred size widget. So with this, we'd be able to maintain the custom height of our app bar. Now, for this reason, you need to override one. So let's go ahead and do that. So inside this, actually, we need to mention our custom width and height. So here you can see that we are returning a size widget, which has this width as double, which means that max finite. So it will take the complete width of this as well as the height. So this is the height that you want to play around and change if necessary. Right, so after this, now we'll go ahead and see how to use three of these uh, uh, different properties inside our build method. So first we'll replace this container and we'll replace this using safe area widget. Then after that, over here, we'll replace this child with a padding widget. But we are applying padding to control the horizontal space for the icons left and right and as well as vertical alignment so if you play around with this if you play with these two values you'd have better control on the left to right and top and bottom distance from the very top well after that as a child we'll have stack widget where are we why are we having stack widget because we want to align all this thing together as well as like for example this widget uh, this text should overlap these two widgets with this we will have with this we'll have better control so let's go ahead and implement our position widget inside this stack widget for this title widget so let's go ahead and do that so here we go so here inside you see that inside the stack widget we have this position fill and then we are checking whether our title widget is null or not previously we said Previously, we said that this title widget could be null. So if it is null, then of course, we'll have a default value for this widget. So as you can see over here, we check if it is null, then we have this center widget. Now inside the center widget, actually we are passing a text widget, which is the title value. Now this is the default title value, which is empty. And very soon we'll also see how to pass a value to it. Well, now if this title widget is not empty, then we'll go ahead and uh, show actual title widget. Now, because the title widget could be null, so that's why we're here we are saying that, okay, in this case, I know this is not null. And as you can see from the property, this is a widget, so which means that you can pass any kind of widget to it over here. Now, there's the time we go ahead and take a look at our app. Anyway, first you have to make sure that you have downloaded the starter code and you'll have a template like this where you have this, uh, homepage as well as a background painter if you run your starter app so it would look like this now inside this scaffold actually we want to have an app bar so let's go ahead and type an app bar now here we'll use our custom app bar the one that we created 
and we just simply pass nothing to it. Now we'll go ahead and save it and we see that it looks like this. Now because of this custom app bar, so it doesn't know where to start from. So it's uh, skipping this app bar and starting from the body. But we want our body to extend the whole app bar. So how to do that? So over here we have a property which is called extended body behavior. So we'll just simply set it to true. And as you can see, now our app bar, actually the, cus the default app bar is being replaced. And here we are covering this app bar with our body. Anyway, so earlier we saw that a few of these parameters are optional and we can pass title. So let's go ahead and pass title to it. Say custom ever. So here we already see that we can pass a title as a custom ever. Now at the same time, we have seen that over here from the condition, if we have a title widget, then we'll use that title widget. Otherwise, we'll use a uh, title, the title we pass. Now over here, say for example, you want to pass a title widget. Let's go ahead and do that. And here we'll pass icon, icons, and here we'll simply pass a timer. So this is our icon widget over here. As you can see, we are passing to title widget. So let's go ahead and save it. Now, as you see that if we have a title widget or any kind of widget, our text widget is replaced. So yes, up to you what you want to pass, whether you want to pass a widget or a title to it. Of course, we can style it over here. So we could do color and we do colors.white, which is, it would make it look better. Yes, right. Now we'll see how to create a back button over here as well as how to replace this back button with any kind of widget as we want. Now, to be able to do that, first we need to come to our custom app bar and inside this stack widget, inside this children right over here, we'll create another row widget and we'll set the basic properties to it and then we'll have children. Now, as a children, the first one here we do like this. So first we are checking if we have the leading widget or not. So remember, leading is also a widget. So we are checking if we have a leading widget, then we go ahead and use it. If we don't have, we use a back button. So this is a back button widget. Let's go ahead and save it. And here we see that this is our back button. Why? Because we are not passing any leading widget. So we can just simply come over here and pass a leading widget and we'll see how it looks like. So here it's a leading. And then here for now, for any kind of widget, we are passing icons. So because it will make our job easier but in real life, you can use anything. So for example, so here we'll add something like, say for example, home button and we'll assign color to it. So here we do colors.white. Let's go ahead and save it. So as you can see, we have this uh, white home icon. Now, if we replace this leading widget, now we'll see that here we fall back with this default back button. So now it's becoming more and more reusable. Next here we'll see how to create an icon button or actually show menu button. With this we would be able to go back to or go to another page. Now for this reason we'll come over here one more time and inside this row widget. So right after this conditional check we'll add another condition. Now, this is a variable that we need to go ahead and create first. So let's go ahead and come at the top. Here we created actually two up here. We created two parameters. One is show action icon, which would be responsible for showing an icon button over here. And for the icon button, we want to be able to click and go to a new page. So for this reason over here, we have this parameter but this parameter actually a callback so we need to pass a function to this icon button over here so we'll have this unpressed event 
Now, if you come down over here, let's understand the code that how it's working. Well, the first thing, once again, we have this if condition. Well, if this condition is true, then we show this menu button icon. So how it's working, one more time, once again, we are using transform.translate. Now with this offset, we'd be able to control better the menu position over here. And then we have this uh, inkwell widget inside this, we have this on tap event, as well as we have a child that would be showing the actual icon. Now this on tap event over here, we are going to go to a new page. We are using navigator.push. Now I'm going to show you the page very soon. Don't worry. So now we'll come over here. The first thing we we'll do, we we'll go ahead and save it and we'll see nothing changed. But remember, we have a new property which is called show action icon. So we can set it to true. And if we do that, we'll see that our icon is over here. If you set it to false, our icon would be gone. Okay, so that's how it works. So it's more and more reusable widget right now. Now we'll come over here and to make it look better, we'll assign a color to it. So now we see that over here we have this icon. So all of these three things already so far reusable, customizable. Now we'll come over here and we'll take a look at this second page. So because if we want to click on this, we want to go to a certain page. So first here we have this on tap event. If we click, it will take us to the second page. So let's take a look at this second page. And this is nothing fancy. We just have a scaffold over here and we are using the customer, but the one that we created and we just have an icon over here as a back button. And that's all in the body. We just have this background decoration. So we'll click on this and we see that we go back to second page. And if we click on this icon, we can go back to our home page. So from here, you understand that this custom app bar we are using here and here. So it's completely reusable. Now, one thing that we want to do over here, we see that this function over here is hard coded. So actually, we don't want to do it like this. So we can cut this one and we can pass the function that we have already over here on menu action tab. So let's just simply pass on menu action tab. Okay, we are good to go. And from here, actually, we need to pass the actual function. So here we'll say on menu action tab and pass your function, the function that we wanted to create. And uh, let's import the library. We are good to go. So instead of being hard coded over here, we are passing from here. So that that would give us a better control that where we want to go because this variables there, all of them are dynamic and reusable. So let's go ahead and save it. Okay, we hot reloaded and click on this. We see that it works the same way. Beautiful. Anyway, if you learned something, don't forget to subscribe and smash that like button. Thank you.